Hello, this is Tony Myers on the Charisma Podcast Network, and this is Pushing Boundaries, Living Supernaturally. Every one of these podcasts are created to guide you to acknowledge your full healing. By his wounds, you were healed. So I want you to live that out. We aren't to live a life plagued by illnesses or injuries, but we are to live our lives with a healthy body. Moses, at 120 years old, had keen eyesight and strong muscles under the Old Covenant. We can attain that as well under the blood covenant of Christ. Today's episode is no different, but before I introduce today's topic, I want you to write down a miracle you've experienced in your own body. Do it right now. Every one of us has experienced a miracle at one time. Remember the miracle. Now, write down a specific area of your body you need a miracle. Then say to yourself, Jesus healed that. So I am healed of this. Send me an email at TonyJustBelieves at gmail.com with your miracle request, and I will speak life over that need. I was an atheist for 43 years, but yet, during that time of being an atheist, guess what? Say what? Uh, during that time, I experienced miracles, and quite a few of them. There, there was a time, well, there were many times. Let me put it like this. There were many times, <laughs> and I've got the scars to prove it, that I stitched myself up. Uh, after a fight or other instances where I got cut, I would take fishing line and a hook and sew myself up. There's only one place. Well, let me take that back. There's one scar that was caused by a hernia operation. Then there was another scar on the back of my head. Those are the only two scars I have that I didn't sew up. Well, guess what? I did not particularly care about sterility at the time. These were not sterile fish hooks. These were not sterile fishing line. It was the Lord, the reason why those never became infected. Thank you, Jesus. Another time, and this is a straight out and out miracle with no doubt about it. I was crossing the road at midnight. It was around midnight. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a car came barreling at me. Went through the spot that I was standing. It was as if moments before I'm talking moments, seconds, <laughs> milliseconds before that vehicle would have ran me over. I was suddenly lifted up in the air and it was 
about 50 feet past that, that I was gently put set on the ground. True blue miracle. Another time, which, which I've talked about, was doing a drug deal. Now the person that was with me in the car, he agitated the dealer, and the dealer brought out a gun. His partner, who was by me, brought out his, held it to my face, and turned around, shot it off. It was point-blank range. So, thank you, Jesus. The bullet went through me. It shattered the glass. So, it did go off. It was a miracle. And there were many other times. It is the goodness of God that leads to repentance. That would be Romans 2, 4. And that's what we're going to do some talking about today. Let me emphasize this. Tony, then, with these miracles you're telling us about, why didn't you come to God sooner? And my answer to that is because the work that God was doing within me and what he was showing me to the point of my understanding back then, which I was an atheist, so I was in full denial. How did I look at those miracles and all that? I really can't remember, to be honest, what I did with those miracles. But here is the Lord. Here is God being good to me while I'm denying him. So he is wooing me to himself through his kindness, through his mercy, through his love. So what was derailing that? Religion. People that would walk up to me and say, you know you're going to hell. You got to accept Jesus or you're going to hell. And pointing out, well, that there smoking, that sin, that's going to send you to hell right there. It was the way the gospel was presented to me that drove me away from the gospel. Hear this, because so many people and Christians are so calloused to, well, you know, either you accept Christ or you go to hell. Think about what that sounds like to an atheist. Think about what that sounds like to agnostic. Think about that. I really want you to think about that. That is a dictatorship where you have no choice. Serve me or I'm going to kill you. That is the way the majority of unbelievers look at that. That is no way to present a gospel even if you wrap it up with a bunch of sugar and honey. Because we are still hearing the same thing. And if that's the, the only if that's the best that we have, 
then how are we demonstrating God to be? A tyrant? A dictator? And he must be pretty powerless if that's the best he's got. So while God was showing me one thing, those that called themselves Christians were showing me something entirely different. So I will go and say this. I wasn't rejecting God. I was rejecting the way man was representing God. Because all of God's creation pronounces his goodness. So first of all, that's why I want you to think about. Think about the way you are representing the gospel to people. Because if it's that same old spiel, well, we are all deserving of punishment. We are all going to hell unless we accept Jesus. Are you a heresoever for? Are you a whosoever? Well, accept Jesus Christ right now. I'm telling you, that's the wrong message. Because one, if people do to your face accept Jesus, then you just led them into religion. And let's talk about this. So first of all, you're going, you're going to threaten punishment. If you don't accept Jesus, you're going to hell. All right. That never changed anyone's life. Secondly, you're going to get them to go to church. And you're going to tell them, you need to be at church every Sunday. You need to stay in touch with the believers. You need to go and make it a condition. And I'm talking about the majority of mainstream Christianity. This is the way it's handled. And then on top of that, Trust me, I've been the atheist in the church before. So I kind of know what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to pretend everybody feels like this, but this one did. So you're sitting there, you're given the guilt trip that you have to attend church every Sunday. So you're told, be at church or else, and then, now many churches either have something at the altar or pass around the old plate, right? So not only are you saying, all right, first I'm going to threaten you. Then I'm going to make it mandatory. You come to my establishment every week. And then you have to pay a membership fee. In order to belong. You have to pay tithes. And because we're going to pass around a plate or make you walk up to the altar, everybody's going to see whether you're giving or not. Hmm. Is that presenting the goodness of God that leads men to repentance? Or is that bringing them straight to religion where your exterior actions mean everything and your heart means nothing.
So let's go back and let's get back on a positive note. A better way to approach people. And we need to stop doing the old switch and bait, bait and switch, and switcheroo. Because the gospel is good news. It's not the good and bad news. The gospel is a different path. Entirely. Because now we are new creations in Christ. The old, the old man is dead and gone. Keep him dead. Keep him buried. Now we are a new creation in Christ. So let's focus on who we are in Christ. It is the goodness of God that leads us to repent. And it's the goodness of God that keeps us on that path. He's a good father. Let's stop representing him as good and bad. Here's the good. Here's the bad. Well, guess what? When we have a Christ consciousness, when we know who we are in the body of Christ and in Christ, then we start living that out. And this includes sickness. When we understand that one thing Christ did for us was take sickness away. It's his goodness that leads us to change our minds. And it is a change in mind. It's a change in mindset from going to I'm a worthless worm to hey, Jesus and the Heavenly Father love me. This is the gospel of glory. This is what we should be showing. Jesus Christ already dealt with our sin. Ooh, those are some tough words I know. He dealt with our sin. The Holy Spirit should be our teacher and he's guiding us onto a better path. Now, let's go back to, I'm reading from the mirror translation, simply because I love it. A presumed knowledge of that which is right or wrong does not qualify you to judge anyone, especially if you do exactly the same stuff that you notice other people do wrong. You effectively condemn yourself. No one is another person's judge. God must judge all transgression, but your judging others does not make them any guiltier. God is completely impartial in his judgment, you are not scoring any points or disguising your own sins by telling on others. Do not underestimate God's kindness, the wealth of his benevolence and his resolute refusal to let go of us because he continues to hear the echo of his likeness in us. Thus, his patient passion is to shepherd everyone into a radical mind shift. All right, so the first three verses. God is completely impartial in his judgment. You are not scoring any points or disguising your own sins by telling on others. That's huge. Now, 
if all of this is true, then what in effect is Paul saying? Don't point out other people's sin. But yet, when you're walking up to someone and trying to lead them to Christ through condemning them, hey, look, mister, if you keep living your life the way you're living it, you're going to hell. Oh, that's tough love. Yeah. Which completely undid every good thing that God was doing in my life and caused me to dig my heels in and hate Christianity that much more. For really, real. The way you present the gospel is the path you're going to set that person on. And now, when you bring someone in, by the guilt condemnation message, you put their feet right onto religion. The institution of religion, not relationship. Now they are trying to earn and to show God how much they love him instead of working from what he's already given us and the love he has for us. This is why it is his goodness that leads us to repent. Had I been shown that, had someone walked up to me and said, hey, Tony, so you were in the army. Were there any times that you should have been dead that you just had a miracle? Then I would have thought about it. Oh, well, that's a no-brainer. There are many times, um, along with the other incidents I told you. you. You direct people that way. You give testimonies of how in your own life God's goodness. And like I said, this ain't no bait and switch either. You don't get them into church and then start pointing out their sin. Think about this. Now, once again, this all is a reflection of how willing God is to heal us as well. People don't realize even these messages that don't seem to be about healing really are because it's about our mindset. When we know his loving kindness, when we know and realize that when we were sinners, God was still working miracles. I'm sorry, I do not agree with those that say God does not hear sinners. I wouldn't be standing here today or sitting here because of the many miracles I've experienced even while I was an atheist. So how much more does he want because he's already provided it for you, you to be healed? Now, trust, it, trust him with it and let him do the healing work in you. Here I am, Lord, do your work in me. When we let go of that self-effort of religion, then he can work in us. When we stop, stop trying to prove to him how great we are, and we say, hey, I'm weak. You're strong. I'm weak. I'm entering your rest. You handle it. And this is truth. It's our self-effort 
that in most cases keep us from being healed. Which is another reason why unbelievers tend to get healed a lot easier because they aren't trying to prove to God how great they are. And many times, like myself, was I was at the end of my rope. But guess what? When we just realize how much it is his kindness and his goodness, how do you come over how do you overcome evil with good? Every case. You don't repay back evil with evil. You overcome evil by doing good. Three lessons, three points that I want you to really take with you. God is good. He is always good. And it's His goodness and His willingness to be a loving Father that melts our hard, calloused hearts and leads us to Him. So reflect that to the one you're witnessing to. When you're witnessing, witness to His goodness. Have your own testimony. Ask them questions. Be prepared to pray to see that person healed. Be prepared to give any word, any prophetic word, any word of knowledge that you may have while talking to that person. This is the way that you set someone on a different path, on the path of life. Show them the goodness of the Lord. And I would go so far to say, and I've said this before, during that whole period that I was an atheist, one person who is a Christian showed me true love. One person, 43 years. Think about that. Uh, I just saw some Facebook post. There was a Satanist worshiper or founder of a Church of Satan. And I don't know whether that's true or not. I did not look, check it out. But he evidently resigned. He was like the CEO of it. He resigned from it, became a Christian because one person showed him the love of Christ. And he said that was the first time in his life a Christian had ever shown him love. Never in all his years had a Christian showed him love. It's love that overcomes evil. You approach anyone with the gospel of love and no agenda, just love. That's when all the defenses come tumbling down. And then don't lead them right into religion. Lead them into relationship. Many of you are coming out of religion and you're struggling because of it. So don't bring someone else into religion so that they, in a few years, can go through the same struggle. 
lead them right into relationship with the Holy Spirit, relationship to a loving Heavenly Father, relationship with Jesus. Introduce them to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let them get to know them. Amen? Let's stop sending a mis message. Let's start representing the loving Heavenly Father who is more than happy. He's already met our needs. That's why we have the Holy Spirit in us. Let's believe that and show others that because that's the truth that, that we know. It's his goodness that leads men and women and children to change their minds and head down a different path. Amen. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. Thank you for watching my ta channel. Now, hit the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Click that bell. There you go. Click it. All right. Good. Write a comment. If you would like prayer, write a comment for prayer. Give me some feedback. What about this teaching helped you? What didn't help you? Now, if you would like to partner with Outside the Four Walls Ministry, my ministry, then simply go to TonyBelieves.com and we appreciate you wanting to partner with us to reach the lost and see everyone heal. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed, be healed, and be a blessing.